Okay, so um, let's continue with chapter two. Okay, I'll just give it two minutes. It's recording to start. Okay. Yeah. So Second Thessalonians chapter two. Okay. So um, let me just read. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come, unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time? Now the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Now, and, sorry, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, so here Paul is talking about what will happen or what should happen before the coming of the Lord. Right, it's talking about the end times and which you would have gone through in greater detail in you know eschatology so uh, very clearly saying you know don't be shaken in mind you know don't be um, don't be troubled uh, let there be no you know uh, uh, no doubt uh, either by spirit or by word or by letter so in the sense he's saying that you know either if, if you receive any anybody you know if you if you receive any information like this like when people come and tell you this what are they saying that um, the day of the lord is already come you know he has come you're left behind and uh, you know and something discouraging you know if people come and say that or even if you receive a letter you know as if it's from us so so you're saying you know maybe people would write to you saying okay this is what all has mentioned and even if they you know, as if it's from us they are writing a letter with this kind of teaching it's a lot of deception right um so if that happens he's saying don't be shaken in mind or be troubled don't be troubled let no one deceive you by any means that day will not come the day of the lord that day will not come unless the falling away first happens okay so there is great deception and lawlessness at work and and the son of perdition or the man of uh, you know man of sin uh, is revealed okay, he's talking about uh, the the man of lawlessness is called the anti antichrist in you know epistles of john and uh, and the falling away is referring referring to you know, people rebelling against God and uh, a, a lot of them, you know, uh, sinning openly uh, and seems to be some kind of a great, you know, uh, rebellion and uh, unbelieving um, uh, you know, nature of, of these people coming forth. So saying that must first happen, then the man of sin will be revealed, you know, the son of perdition, as he's called. He will be revealed and uh, he will oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God. So he places himself. Now, we don't know how that is going to play out or how that is going to happen. But 
Uh, Paul very clearly says, oh, this is how he will exalt himself above everything. He will, he will draw worship to himself, right? Uh, so above all that is called God or all that is worship and that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. So uh, obviously demonically energized uh, or demonically anointed, right? So showing himself as God saying that he himself is God and he needs to be worshipped, right? This is the ultimate thing, right? That uh, um, that man exalting himself to the position and the place of God and demanding uh, worship. Um, we've seen right through, right? In the Old Testament also, we, we read how uh, in Babylon, Daniel was along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where, where the king, you know, put a, a structure of himself saying, bow down and worship. So it's not something new, but here he's saying that he will he himself will be in the temple of God, showing himself to the whole world that he is God. And and Paul is saying, you know, you remember I taught you these things, right? When I was there, um, just excuse me. So when I was there, I told you these things. And, uh, you know, what is the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. And uh, the one who is restraining it um, uh, is talking about um, uh, he who now restrains is talking about, uh, you know, the God himself and the, and the Holy Spirit. And, of course, there are differing opinions on this. Uh, and but he's, he's clearly he's talking about the one who restrains the work of lawlessness and he moves away, he steps away, or he's taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. Now, the lawless one is, is in no way is he compared to God or, or his ability and power is in no way can be compared to God, can be equated with God. So even though he's, you know, uh, he tries to, intimidate and, and etc uh, and try tries to exalt uh, to the, the place and position of God no way can he be compared because the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth it's like you know one breath you know, going out and he this is this is it he will destroy with the brightness of his coming so darkness has to leave because the Lord himself is the light and uh, uh, he will he will destroy all works of darkness and uh, the son of darkness itself. Himself, right? The come of the coming of the lawless one. Verse nine says it's according to the working of Satan. Now, now we need to understand that that uh, is uh, the, the lawless one. Whatever he does is is because of the working of Satan. Is according to the working of Satan. Right. So. Uh, which means he is empowered by Satan, and uh, there will be, uh, uh, according to the, you know, the word, the word used there again is energia, meaning supernatural works, right? Supernatural works, uh, and now the supernatural work is attributed to the devil, okay? Att attributed to Satan, saying that it's it's a supernatural work, but it's a work that is empowered by Satan. And th these are the works with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Okay, the person is also working out signs and working out one lying wonders. So it's called lying wonders because it's not pointing to the truth. Now, when the Holy Spirit you know, works, when the Holy Spirit ministers, or when He brings about. Uh, uh, you know, signs and wonders. We we notice that it's always for the edification of the church. And right? we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 you know, uh, it's for the profit of all. It's for the benefit of all. Okay. We also see that the Holy Spirit, through whom, you know, these um, gifts and uh, the, the uh, miracles and everything uh, is done in the life of the believers and or through the believers, always exalts the Lord. Okay, John chapter 16. It always glorifies Jesus. Okay. Now these are lying signs and wonders because it says 
in verse 10 with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they may be saved okay so it's it's unrighteous first of all it is not righteous it is unrighteous deception and it is done by done among all those who are perishing okay because those who did not receive the love of uh, allow of the truth um and uh, be to be saved right so for this reason, saying that God will send strong delusion, okay, because they something that we see again in in Romans one, you see that. Um, let's just turn there for a minute. Um, it says, uh, you know, a very uh, a verse that is um, that is something very um, it talks about, you know, hopelessness. Right? He's saying that um, if you if you look at Romans one and um, verse twenty, twin or probably verse eighteen onwards, talks about how the wrath of God is revealed uh, against all ungodliness and so on, and it describes the kind of people they were, describes their decisions, their choices, uh, like. In verse 22, it says, professing to be wise, they became fools, changing the glory of the incorruptible God into an image. Um, and verse 24, it says, therefore, God also gave them up. Okay, It's like God giving them up, saying, okay, you're continuing to rebel, continuing to, you know, um, give yourself to uncleanness and and uh, uh, untruth and lies and everything. So it says God gave them up to uncleanness. Um, and, and again, verse 26, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, right? So it's like um, verse 28 says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, Again, it says God gave them over. Okay, so it's like God taking his restraining hands, you know, the hands that restrained, protected them. Uh, God just, uh, because of the free will, God saying, okay, fine. You want to move out of my protection? You want to go um, and, and be in all this? Okay, God taking his hands off. It's the same thing that we see here, that for this reason, that God should send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Okay, so uh, it's like God taking his protective hands off and then there is uh, the works of the enemy working out delusion, meaning, um, you know, something that is not of truth, right? It's delusional. It's not of reality even. Okay, so that they should believe the lie that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in righteousness. So, so it comes really at, uh, at the end of, you know, God really reaching out and because God is able to save to the uttermost. And we know that God, uh, you know, reaches out, draws people and the goodness of God leads people to repentance and so on. But here is, we see people sinning, rebelling, um, exchanging the truth for the lie. And, uh, and and here we see you know satan working all these lying wonders and signs and god taking his restraining hands off so that there should be strong delusion among them that they would believe the lie and uh, not the truth because they actually wanted to believe the lie and had uh, pleasure in unrighteousness alone okay um verse 13 but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you. Okay, while this is happening, or this is going to happen in the, in the last days, in the end times, saying, but we are bound to give thanks to God for you, because uh, brethren beloved, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now may the Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us 
and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Okay, so Paul turns his attention to the believers uh, in Thessalonica and he's saying, you know, but we are bound to give thanks always for you. Okay, in other words, he's saying we are, uh, you know, we are obliged. You know, it, we are obliged. It's under. It's our obligation to give thanks to God for you, um, because you are beloved by God. You, you, ex, you know, you accepted Him as Lord and Savior. You also heeded the, you know, the, the gospel message that we shared with you. He has called you by the, our gospel. He says. And the gospel that we brought to you, and uh, for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, you know, we give thanks to you. This is what has happened. You received Christ. Therefore, stand strong, stand fast, and hold those things and you know, hold the traditions that we are taught. So, Paul, uh, in, in, along you know, with the teaching, the, the scriptures, certain useful things. And certain helpful things, uh, traditions that they were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now, um, we see that uh, 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 some he always also talks about these to the Corinthian church. Okay, um, sometime later when he talks to the Corinthian church, he talks about these traditions. So, uh, some things that were sometimes good and helpful maybe you know about the sacraments in the church and and so on like the lord's supper and uh, uh, and baptism and all those things which were helpful and and which is the truth uh, which had a lot of significance uh, spiritual significance so he is um, he's saying you hold fast these things that you were taught either by word meaning you know, as we were there we taught you or by our epistle we have written to you so you need to hold fast to these things don't let them go have a strong grip on these things okay so hold fast um and um, which is verse verse 15 okay verse 15 and 16. okay so um hold fast stand fast and um, and again it means to be firm and to keep going okay to be firm and to keep going no matter what persevering okay uh, or to keep standing in the truth and not uh, not in, not giving up not letting go not giving up okay so hold hold on to these things um, have a strong grip uh, or take possession of these things right Hold, stand fast and hold the traditions. Hold fast to the traditions that you were taught. Um, verse 16, now may the Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us eternal, everlasting uh, consolation and good hope by grace. So he has given us everlasting consolation. Okay, everlasting. So never ending okay so that's uh, of course again we see it is the work and the ministry of the holy spirit the one who's the comforter the one who's the counselor the one who also consoles right the one who is the help is the paracletos who comes alongside to help so uh, paul is saying you know who has given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace May he comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Okay, may he comfort your hearts. Again, that word used there is paraclete, which means to come alongside, to put a hand around you, and uh, may he console, may he comfort your heart and establish you, right? Establish you. So, and the word there, uh, establish means to strengthen. May he strengthen you in every good word. Uh, he uses the word logos and work. Okay. 
every good word and work every good word and good deed uh, every good word and labor okay may the lord comfort your heart and establish you and strengthen you in every good word and uh, deed okay so saying may the lord do this may the lord strengthen you may the lord establish you okay let's go to chapter 3 chapter 3 is saying finally brethren pray for us that the word of the lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for not all have faith but the lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one and we have confidence in the lord concerning you both that you do and will do the things we command you now may the lord direct your hearts into the love of god and into the patience of christ but we command you brethren in the name of our lord jesus christ that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us for you yourselves know how you ought to follow us for we were not disorderly among you nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge but worked with labor and toil night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you not because we do not have authority but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us for even when we were with you we commanded you this if anyone will not work neither shall he eat for we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner not working at all but are busy bodies now those who are such we command and exhort through our lord jesus christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread but as for you brethren do not grow weary in doing good and if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle note that person and do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed yet do not count him as an enemy but admonish him as a brother now may the lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way the lord be with you all the salutation of paul with my own hand which is a sign in every epistle so i write the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all. so in closing remarks um he gives some instructions he uh, he has some requests uh, the first one he says is pray for us okay pray for us um and he he says this right uh, uh, in timothy we read this and and in several other places also he we read this that paul request the church to pray for him pray for the ministry um that there might be an op- uh, uh, a door of opportunity open for them to share the gospel it's always it was it's always that you know whenever he says pray for us it is this here also he says you know you know he says pray for us it says that the lo- that the lord uh, the word of the lord may run swiftly and be glorified so that is always his request for prayer that is always his focus you know when he is requesting prayer it's is to do with ministry when he is requesting somebody to pray it is to do with you know this that uh, the ministry will be good that the word will be there will be opportunities that the lord will give them utterance that he will may, may be able to share effectively the the revelations which the lord had put in his heart it is always this so similarly he says you know and um, may the word of the lord run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you now the word has come and you have uh, received it and your lives are changed and that's the way where the word is glorified and now the people who have received and uh, have their lives changed they are esteeming the word right they are uh, giving respect and honor to the word of god and so that is the way where the word of god will be glorified so he's uh, saying pray that we will do this that we will minister in this way um a second day he says that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for not all have faith so so second thing is saying about is is saying pray for opposition um pray for the kind of persecution that we face you know is pray that there will be deliverance that there we will be delivered from unreasonable uh, men 
and wicked men. Okay, not all, all have faith. So pray. The Lord is faithful who will establish you, establish you and guard you from the evil one. Okay. And we have confidence um, that you will do and will continue to do the things that you do and will continue to do the things that we command you. Okay, so um, and then he says, may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and the patience of Christ. So uh, two important attributes, right? two important characteristics. Um, one is the love of God, that is the agape of God, that um, your hearts may be directed into it, that channeled into it, right? So that uh, um, you will experience it. And Paul also you know, writes, um, uh, uh, in the earlier episodes also, that you may know the length, the depth, height, um, the width of the love of God. Right? So that's one of the things that he prays for the church. So here also he's saying that um, uh, may your hearts be directed into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Okay. Um, so which is really He's talking about Christ-likeness. Right? In other words, he's saying, may you grow in Christ-likeness. May you experience Christ-likeness. May you grow in Christ-likeness. Now, this Thessalonian church was already a church which was um, abounding in love for one another. Well, that's what we read um, both in First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians. They say that they have faith. They had faith in God, uh, which was put on display. It was very tangible, very clear. And also their love for one another, right? So because of which, which was which was seen in action, right? Which means they might have lived sacrificial lives. They might have been living uh, on uh, lives of honor, where they honor one another, help one another, and so on. So that is how they might have seen the love of God in action. So uh, for them also, you know, he's saying, may God direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Okay. Um, then he warns, verse 6, he's warning, he's changing his tone, he's saying, we warn every brother who walks disorder, disorderly. Okay. That um, not according to, according to whatever we've taught, whatever we have delivered, um, they're walking disorderly. Know, which the, 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 which is a frustrating thing because they continue to be maybe part of the fellowship. Right? They're choosing to fellowship with them. They're choosing to be you know, uh, there in the gathering. But in their daily lives, they are disorderly. Right? They are, in their daily lives, there's no, uh, there's no devotion to God. There's no discipline. They're walking disorderly. So he's saying, you know, don't come, keep company with such people, right? Uh, but he's saying, you know, you you admonish that person as a brother. Okay, so um, you know, we were not disorderly. You know how you ought to conduct. Now we were not disorderly. You need to understand that we were not disorderly. Nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge. It's not like. So, uh, so Paul is setting some standards in you know ministry, saying we first of all we did not live disorderly lives; uh, it was discipline. Second of all, you know we did not camp ourselves in people's houses, and uh, you know, and also made use of their hospitality uh, because they were just giving us food and shelter and all that. We we did not. We do not do that free of charge. So he's saying we worked. Okay, that is what he says, right? Um, we worked with labor and toil night and day. Okay, so really, uh, it, it, it's a very tough call. It's a very tough decision uh, which Paul you know, made, saying, okay, we are going to work night and day. Uh, we're not going to be eating anybody's bread free of charge. Yes. Uh, when we minister, he also, you, you know, he also says, right, that uh, the laborer is worthy of the of the wages. So he's aware of that. He's aware of the what the Lord taught, uh, uh, the Lord's teaching on that. So he's he's well aware of that. 
but in this situation um, and even with the Corinthians you know we see the similar thing saying that I'm just going to labor and we're going to work and we're not going to receive any uh, anybody's uh, we're not going to abuse anybody's hospitality right so it was a life which was lived above reproach nobody could point any fingers and say okay this is what they did you know they spoke the word in a good way but then you know this is how they live nobody could say that right so you know, we did not eat anyone's bread free of charge but worked with labor and toil night and day um, that we might not be a burden to any of you and uh, also it says not because we do not have authority but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us so really you know that is why with all confidence he could say imitate imitate me or imitate us even as we follow christ um be imitators of god as dear children and uh, he says imitate me even as i fall imitate christ so uh, so he's saying you know that we are making ourselves an example so this is a pattern we're making ourselves as a pattern um that you can follow okay uh which is which is quite something you know it's a it's which is really um a decision that he's um, taking and it's a he's taken and it's a testimony uh to the to everyone around and and also it would help distinguish you know the false teachers the false ministers uh, from the from Paul himself, who's true and authentic, right? So, um, so that is one way by which he is setting that pattern, setting that example uh, for others to follow. So it is like uh, it is like a pattern, right? It is a uh, some kind of a pattern that they can look at and then say, okay, I want to do the same thing. Like it's it's talking about an image, right? Uh, an image that you can look at, an image that is on display, and say, okay, I want to be like that. Uh, even I want to uh, uh, do the same things, right? In my ministry, even I want to do the same thing. So, so Paul was raising up leaders, right? Raising up the church, raising up the leaders, and uh, because of which we see that you know they would also go share the gospel. They would also teach the word uh, as how he taught them. So, um, so he's saying, you know, this is an example of how you should follow us. Okay, for we hear that there are some among you in a disorderly manner. Now he goes on to explain what is this disorderly manner. Okay. They were not working at all. Okay, so when we say work, it's not just uh, you know, it's not just uh, physical labor uh, or so-called secular work, but also you know the work of ministry. Right. So they were not working at all. So they were just busy. They were going from place to place. Probably they would just show up at meal times in people's houses. Maybe breakfast there in one house, lunch there in the same house, dinner they are going to some other house. Um, so they are not working at all. They are busy bodies, he says. Um, and those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so two things. Command, a command is to be obeyed. And that is why, you know, we... Uh, issue a command a command is something that is to be obeyed and also mixed with encouragement right so he's saying exhort it is uh, when you say exhort it means to call one to one side okay and encourage saying okay come you now let me just talk to you let me tell you uh, what needs to be done so these commanding and exhorting Okay, so so even in our ministering, you know, we can't have just commands and say, okay, this is what you need to do, you obey or else. No, there is command, there is also exhortation. Right? There is the command saying that, hey, this is what, this is the command of the Lord. This is not my words. This is the command of the Lord. Pointing that, you know, to pointing that person to the command of the Lord and say, you better obey. This is a command. Also to encourage, to exhort. Right, and say, okay, what is it? Maybe you know what is causing you not to obey. 
let's talk about that. Just want, let me encourage you to obey this. You know, let me encourage you to um, to pursue the Lord. Let me encourage you to desire the Lord. Right. So, um, so the, that is something that we see here. So, command and exhort. So, what is it that they're commanding and exhorting? Um, he's saying, you know, we exhort through the Lord Jesus in the sense it's uh, it's not their own words, but this is also what the Lord would communicate. So, through the Lord Jesus, as empowered by the Lord, as the Lord would say in our, if we if you were to stand here. So that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. So he's saying they need to, you know, start working. They cannot be, it's it's not that they don't have opportunity, it's not that they don't have any ability, but they are simply uh, you know, not doing it. Okay, they are busy bodies, they are just being uh, they are just wasting. The time and the resources of others, right? So, um, just one second. Um, um, yeah. So, uh, so he's saying, you know, the. Um, um, but as for you, brethren. Okay, so this is the exhortation for those who are walking disorderly um, that they should work that they should work with their own hands and uh, they should uh, eat their own bread okay which means they should provide for their own needs and not really depend on others all the time okay so he's saying um, they should provide for their own so you say even even if it's ministry okay so you're ministering and the lord has laid out some ways he's saying okay you you live through the, um, you know, through the support of people, etc. So even in that, okay, there is ministry, there is work, uh, work of ministry, or you know, you know uh, um, involved in, and uh, you know, there is something that's coming, and you, you are living out of that, right? So which is good. So he's saying, um, let them work in quietness and eat their own bread. Right? But as for you, brethren, you know, do not grow weary in doing good don't get tired of doing the good things in doing good do not grow weary you know so why would someone grow weary while doing good okay uh, because maybe they're not seeing the results right we are continuing to do good and the others are continuing to just you know they are just maybe we look around and we see look at the world around and and we and we see okay they are continuing to do the unrighteous things right so Paul is saying you know but you don't grow weary because when you look around yes there is every possibility that you might grow weary tired right and uh, something that is not physical but something that is emotional and something that is exhausting that happens in the body in the mind primarily which affects our body as well right so don't grow weary while you're in doing good so don't get, no don't stop do the good thing if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle note that person and do not keep company with him that he may be shame so uh, here's again a strong instruction is saying okay if they're not obeying this epistle you know, they're coming to the church, they're being part of the fellowship, but, but they're not obeying this epistle for whatever reason. Like he's saying, no, do not keep company with that person that they may be ashamed. And um, and then that uh, he also says, but don't count him as an enemy, but rather admonish that person as a brother. Okay. So don't go to one extreme and say, okay, you did not do this. So therefore, you know, you are, you are an outcast or you're you know you're no longer here welcome here no. He's saying admonish him as a brother so correct that person um, warn that person right tell that person what they're doing doing is wrong but do it as a brother okay and then uh, final um, verses of uh, you know uh, greetings 
and uh, blessings. He's saying, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. Okay, And uh, he is signing the epistle with his own hand. So, uh, so you notice that in the start of the epistle, you see that uh, Paul and Silas and Timothy are there. And obviously, you know, he might have dictated, somebody might have written down, but then he puts his name, he signs his name. So he says, the salute, salute, this salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is signed in every epistle. And so I write. So um, so it's, uh, it's something that he is uh, writing, um, you know, uh, and uh, he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Okay, so with that he ends the... Um, uh, this epistle. So these are two, well, uh, one is a very small epistle, Second Thessalonians. Uh, uh, it's, uh, and like we we saw that it's it was written not too long after the first one was written. It's almost like a follow-up letter and uh, to warn the people to clear the doubts about the second coming and uh, and also some wrong ideas maybe the second coming has already happened so he's establishing you know it was the truth uh, to them to the church and saying these things should happen and only then will the uh, will the lord come and in first Thessalonians, he's already written you know this will happen this is how it will happen the lord will come and uh, we who are alive will be caught up and those who are dead in christ will will will, will rise again and all this will happen right at the coming of the lord the trumpet will sound and the, the voice of an archangel and all that um so he mentions that so, so here again he is referring to those uh, to the end and he's saying these things should happen actually about the lawless one and about how he will um you know, exalt himself as god and these things these are also some things to watch out for so don't think that the the Lord has already come, and you know all this has not happened. So uh, till such time, you know it's it doesn't mean uh, till such time the Lord will not come. Or um, so um, so they were uh, ob obviously troubled, right? So what happened? Lord maybe has come, and maybe I'm I'm left behind, and you know. So he's settling them. You know, even if somebody would write in our name. You be firm in your mind. You be firm and don't be shaken, right? And of course, we see the uh, in chapter two and chapter three, we see those instructions uh, on how they need to stand fast and uh, how uh, there will be lying signs and wonders, right? So lying signs and signs and wonders by the evil one, and among the people who are, uh, you know, those are things to see. Um, you know, it says, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, they might, that they might be saved. So these lying signs and wonders, you know, sometimes people think that, okay, it's it's in the church, you know, we look at genuine signs and wonders and they say, okay, um, you know, uh, Paul writes about that, these are lying signs and wonders. No, it's, it's, it's very clear, saying it's the work of Satan lying signs and wonders and it's an unrighteous deception among those who perish those who have not actually received the lord right so among them are these lying signs and wonders you know it's very clear right it says uh, for they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved so among those people are these is the working of satan being made manifest lying signs and eh? wonders and also you know they have this delusional thinking uh, because they have rejected the truth and god has actually given them over right to such strong delusion right and um, yeah fine right so with that we come to the end of um, you know um, these epistles and and the end of the course also so um, we'll stop right here. Let me just um, stop the recording as well. One second. Okay.